All right. Yes. Did I fill this? Yeah. All right. We're good. Okay. It's the Gaming Galleon. Uh, I'm Captain Raz. Thanks for coming. It's an exciting week. You know, the thing about doing a, a voyage every week with a different game every week, there's a lot of games out there that have been sitting, waiting in the wings for months and months. Games that, you know, I either grew up with or I think deserve a nod. The summertime, it's really easy to pick shows, okay? We had a show ready to go in the wings. We were rehearsing it. Uh, I mean, two weeks before today, totally ready. And then what happens? Last Friday happens. What happened last Friday? Pokemon Go happened, okay? Now, we knew this was coming, but I don't really, you know, if you've seen the show, I don't exactly, you know, hang on every word of the modern, uh, you know, everyday contemporary release dates, okay? So, Ga Pokemon Go came out, you start seeing it on Facebook, which frankly, with all the political stuff on there, is a relief to see. The weekend passes, Monday hits, and all of a sudden the national media is all over Pokemon Go. You can't watch, you know, your local news channel without seeing some, you know, anchor bumble through a Pokemon, Poka, you know, trying to, you know, get through a story about this game that all of us, if you're a gamer, have been appreciating for over a decade and a half. So, you know, we're two, three days away from the show, and that's when I realize our hand has been forced. We have to do, finally, a Pokemon show. And that's not, you know, it's not forced reluctantly, okay? I love Pokemon, don't get me wrong, okay? I was uh, excited about it when it first came out. Uh, played quite a bit of it at the time. Played Gold, and then for a decade put it down. Uh, about a year or two prior, maybe about three years ago, I got a hold of Leaf Green in a pawn shop. And I played quite a bit of it. So that's what we're playing today. We're playing Pokemon Leaf Green. Uh, we're going to hit the chest. Good stuff sitting in the chest. Uh, I've got some fun stuff planned in Pokemon. I'm going to try and explain to those people out there who are just finally hearing about Pokemon what the big deal is. Why uh, adults would, would play a game that looks so kiddy. I think that that's the biggest problem with Pokemon. It seems like people... Adults just have a problem who don't play this. They have a real problem swallowing the fact that this is a worthy video game. We're going to be talking about that. But uh, what I really want to get into right now off the top is, you know, what caused this big craze, which is Pokemon Go. Now, you're probably thinking me, you know, like everyone else, any, any gamer who's worth his salt these days has probably at least tried Pokemon Go, has it downloaded on their app. Um, maybe not every gamer, but certainly the majority, uh, you know, big, a big amount are playing this, trying it. Well, I think about a month or so ago, my phone died. And I was running a Samsung 2. Anyway. <laughs> if you know phones, you may realize how behind the times I was in phone technology. So behind that even if I did have that old Samsung 2 running... There's no way I would have been able to play Pokemon Gold. So I haven't tried it. Okay? But I don't really I don't think if you know Pokemon, I don't think you need to. I think you understand why this is such an exciting idea to transcend the video game of, of collecting and exploring this world and putting it into the real world. I think you get it. But I still didn't want to just come up here and be like, oh I get it, okay, well let's move on. I felt like it would be important for me to at least experience it to the best of my abilities starting this show so i was lucky enough to know you know a very um versed and dedicated poke trainer called uh, felicia um and uh, she's a friend of mine who has been all over the city of indianapolis uh where the the ship is usually based when we're not on a voyage uh she has been up and down she's been putting together parties to go out together with friends and find you know that um find that vaporeon or find that pikachu uh explore the unknown 
for, you know, glory and uh, team valor. She's team valor. Uh, so anyway, she put us up this thing on Facebook yesterday that she's going out to Franklin, Indiana. Now, I, I go home after work. I'm a first shifter, take a nap. It's around 5 p.m. I wake up and I have it in the back of my head. She's going out there. I look up where Franklin, Indiana is. It looks like it's about a half an hour south of Indianapolis. I've never been that far south in the Indiana. So I thought, well, this is a good educational kind of R&D trip. We're going to do Pokemon. It's a good way to go. And, you know, hey, we get to see a little more of, you know, the world around us. So I give her a call. She says uh, she's we're going to meet up at the, the local arcade that she owns. And then everybody's going to get in the car. She's going to drive us down there. So I get some pants on, you know, no time for food. Get in the car, drive out to the, the arcade, meet up at, at the specified time, which is around 6 p.m. And she said, you know, at least another person was coming. She gets there and the guy bails via text minutes before we're, we're due to leave. So it's me and her heading out to Franklin, Indiana. I'm like, why Franklin, Indiana? She's like, well, I grew up there. And it's a university town. And from what I understand, there's a lot of lures going out down there tonight. And a lure is basically cheese for a rat, okay? People, these Pokemon maniacs are putting down these digital lures around their perspective areas and it's generating these Pokemon to show up. So it's, and, and apparently lures are worth some sort of money or maybe there's, there's a finite amount if you're, you know, for each player. So it's a big deal if you can kind of jump on the horsey, jump on the back of people who are dropping their lures at the same time. This is good for you. So good that apparently it's worth driving half an hour to get to. So I said, okay, well, sure, let's go. So we get in the car and along the way to the arcade and leaving the arcade, it's already a foregone conclusion that we're going to be fighting some weather. It's been nasty the past couple days here uh, out in Indianapolis. There was um, just, you could see the skyline turning dark. People are putting pictures up on Facebook of just, you know, black clouds. Looks like it's going to be a bad one, a squall, what have you. We don't care. We get in the car. We get on the highway. And as soon as we hit the highway, we're stopped. There's an accident on the road. The rain starts pouring. We're inching along traffic. And, you know, our, our, her phone's finally lighting up saying, hey, there's an accident on this road. We're like, thanks for telling us. I take the opportunity in the passenger seat to break out the old uh, Game Boy Micro and start, you know, re working a little bit more on the voyage we have planned today um, via Leaf Green. We finally get to our destination. Uh, we're probably about 30, 40 minutes behind schedule. She says, when we get to Franklin, Indiana, we're stopping at a guy's apartment that I know. He's a friend. He's going to be pretty much, you know, if I had the audio, the music on the whole time, let me cut that. We don't need that right now. We'll get to the music later. Um, okay. So, yeah, we, we get to this guy's place, walk in. Nice enough guy. He's got Pokemon cartoon on the TV. He's wearing a, a, a Pokemon shirt. There's a Gengar on his shirt, if you really care. And I'm like, okay, well, obviously this guy knows his stuff. And Felicia says to our, our, our now uh, guide, Reed, where are we headed? And he's like, well, they're dropping the lures down at a local park uh, about 15-minute walk away. And we're like, okay. So we decide to walk. We get to this park. And it's like, it may as well be like 1956 Lover's Lane. There's all these cars parked in this little area with like, you know, two, three people in each one. One of the cars, you got the windows down. You got a couple 20-year-olds in there. They're blasting, uh, I want to be the very best, the Pokemon, uh, you know, movie theme song. Um, and about halfway to this park, 
that's when I realize that I'm in trouble. We get about halfway to the park. And that's when I realize that I have a terrible case. And I, I hate to go graphic. So I'll, I'll try to leave this to just one or two words and we'll move on. But I, I realize I have a terrible case of mud butt. And if you don't know what that is, that's what Google's for. If you do know what that is, and you can anticipate my evening of walking through the unknown, you can understand my pain. Okay? Now, I decide not to stop the procession and, and duck into a bar or something. I want to be in the moment, pain or not. You know, that's what adventure's all about sometimes. Adventure can be uncomfortable. Okay? Those of you who don't adventure much and, and complain at the first sight of discomfort... That's what it's about, my friends. That's what makes a good story. Think about that in the future. So sometimes you got to work through the discomfort. I was willing to do that for the moment. So fast forward to the park. We get to the entrance of the park. Felicia says, okay, I'm going to go over to the college. There's some friends of mine I'm going to meet. We're going to bring you, bring, uh, I'm going to bring them back to Lover's Lane here. You guys hang out here. So we're hanging out. There's people, you know, playing the songs, what have you. Uh, and I see, I see about 50 yards from me, a couple of porta potties. And I'm like, oh my God, a porta potty in the middle of a, this forest preserve. Am I this desperate? And I'm like, yeah, I'm this desperate. I go into that thing, do what I need to do. I, it's, and I'm shocked by the level, uh, by how immaculate this place is. It's the cleanest porta potty I ever uh, used. So lucky me, I go back to um, Reed, our liaison. He has been talking to all these other Pokemasters. They're like showing each other their phones. I feel completely out of place because I'm the one jackass there with no phone, right? Felicia shows up with her friends. They're looking around for stuff. They're chatting about, you know, what they found, what they haven't found, what they hear is around. I've seen a war turtle, but I don't, I don't know where he is. He ran off, yada yada. Felicia's like, look, let's go to that bridge over there. I need some water, Pokemon. Let's head over there. We're on our way. There's about six of us now. We get about halfway there, and that's when they're like, stop. And I'm like, they're all looking at me, and I'm like, what? And they say, he's on you. And I said, what? What are you talking about? He says, there's a Meowth. He's on your back. Just chill. Hold on. So they all start hitting me with the phone like it's Men in Black or something. Apparently they get the shot, snap a couple pictures, get catch the Meowth, whatever. They're doing the, the swipe thing. We move on to the bridge. We cross the bridge. And there's some sort of... Over the bridge and through a pavilion... And up some steps, some very slippery steps, there is a, a, another polka spot, I guess. So we go through, across the bridge, through the pavilion, and in the pavilion is like a guy with an acoustic guitar. Sex, sitting next to him is a guy with a big floppy hat, smoking a cigarette. And in between them is a holy Bible. I, I mean, is this a setup for a joke? I, I don't know. But we keep on, they do their business. We're getting up these steps that are stone, and that's when Felicia's like, are you going to be okay walking through this? And I said, what are you talking about? She's like, well, you know, you're wearing the same footwear you always wear. Sandals? It's wet? We're walking on stone? Are you going to be okay? And, you know, she's got kind of a point. We got, I've got slippery leather sandals, you know, combined with slippery feet. They're, they really are kind of slipping off me. But I somehow manage, we do the polka spot, we double back, head back through this pavilion, and that's when the guy in the pavilion, the acoustic guy, starts singing a song that Felicia recognizes. She's like, oh my god, this song played at my wedding, this is uh, named by the Goo Goo Dolls. Can we all just take a moment, and would you mind playing? And so he played for us, live captive audience of six. Uh, you know, you gave him a little applause at the end. It was it was really nice. We got back over the bridge, and that's when her friends had to leave for the evening. So, again, it was me. It came down to the three of us. Me, Felicia, and our liaison to this area. I Why do I keep spacing on his name every time? I've said it three times already. 
Now I've really lost it. I'm thinking like Near, which is a PS3 game. Lane, that's not right. God, I'm Reed. I'm so sorry, Reed. Jeez. Okay. Anyway, we're about halfway back out. We're like still deep in the park. We're making our way back, and that's when the torrential rain hits. Huge stuff. We're up against a river. There's an overpass. We start trying to make it to the overpass. I say, screw it. I just take the sandals off and start carrying them, walking barefoot through this area. We hit the overpass. We think we're safe for about 10 minutes. And that's when the river starts to flood. And the sewers starts to flood. And I don't know that there's... When I say sewer, I don't think we'd have to worry about anything gross or anything. But, you know, there's water everywhere. And the the sidewalk itself that we're standing on starts to flood. So it's like, we gotta go. So we get to the nearest pavilion. We finally find some shelter. Felicia says, oh my god, there's a slowpoke around here. Somewhere in a 300 meter radius. Uh, she starts walking. Reed and I decide to take a break in the pavilion. He's catching up on his Pokemon stuff or whatever. I'm just hanging out. I'm checking my Game Boy Micro to see if Leaf Green's even working on it. God, we're over time. We're over time. We got, we got to wrap this up pretty soon. Okay. Um, she gets it. She grabs him a chop too in somebody's backyard. We walk to the backyard. It's muddy. Big mudslide. I mean, I've still got my, my shoes off. We get back to the main road where all the bars are and stuff like this. Very nice area, Franklin, Indiana. And I think we're about to leave, and that's when Reed says, Hey, a buddy of mine pretty close to here just dropped a lure at his buddy's house. And Felicia's just like, it's like she's been rejuvenated. She's like, really? Well, let's get over there. We start going the opposite direction of our car and head to this garage. And this guy, this guy had it made. Okay, this guy had a house. But in the backyard, he had a garage. And this back, this garage was totally, obviously, he's a married guy. And this was his, you know, place to hang. Him and his friend were there. They greet us. Kyle and Jeremy, very nice guys. To my, you know, I'm like a hawk when it comes to this stuff. So as soon as we walk in, I see a Super Nintendo and a stack of Super Nintendo games. I've never met these people in my life. But that doesn't stop me from rifling through their stuff to see what Super Nintendo games he has. Uh, he offers a beer, he's, he's drinking like a Bud Light, and I'm not really into that, but then he's like, go to the fridge, see if there's anything you want, I open it up, and to my heart's delight, it's my favorite domestic, Miller High Life, in the can, uh, I mean, I couldn't have been happier, we sit there for another half an hour, this guy's house is right next to a church, which, if you haven't played Pokemon Go, is a good place, churches anywhere in the planet are a good place to gather items, like Pokeballs and potions and stuff. He's got another uh, Pokestop in range of his garage. So, so they're actually, Felicia and Reed are feeding off these two stops for half an hour. We're yucking it up. We're talking. Um, we get on the subject of, of piracy. I bring up the ship. Reed is apparently a huge pirate fan. Uh, he LARPs, he even does some singing. We start talking about a local band called Hog Eye Navy. It's a pirate band in Indianapolis. You know, fast friends all of a sudden. We finally walk back around 11 o'clock, back to the car, get in, stop along the way for some hearty, from some Arby's and a milkshake, and we make it back around 11.30 at night. Just enough time to get way less sleep than we needed for the following morning. But let me tell you, you know, I didn't have a phone with me. I didn't have, uh, I, I didn't walk away with a Machomp or a Slowpoke. But I really walked away with some memories. I met some some friends. We've already Facebooked. And um, I think that's really the magic of this game. You've been playing Pokemon for so long on your own. There's so many people out there who've done that, but it, it, it's like... To, to connect like that is, is very magical. Um, I think it's great. I'm all for Pokemon Go. Whether or not I get it, I think I'm still going to be an adventurer and help out my fellow Pokemaniacs go out to these unknown places and try and bring back some monsters. Okay, we are way behind. Let's get into Kanto. The boat is docked. Okay, we've docked onto the east side of Kanto, the east uh, 
eastern coast. And if you know anything about Kanto, there's uh, a number of cities along the coastline. Uh, I've done a little walking and I've gotten us to Lavender Town. And that's where we start. Many things to be seen. We'll be hitting the chest. Man, we're behind. I think probably about eight minutes behind. I don't know. But we'll make time for everything, I promise. Okay, let's get started. It's Pokemon Leaf Green for the Game Boy Advance. Allow me to dawn the Harpa transition and get us started. Okay, you're getting audio, which you've already heard once before. You're getting video. Let me get my phones on here. Uh, where are my phones? Oh, that's the one thing I didn't check when I had Oh, here they are. Okay, thank you. All right, here we go. Ooh, where's the slack on this? All right, here we go. So, we're in this tower, and I just wanted to give you a sense of it. This is actually where dead Pokemon go, okay? Pokemon aren't supposed to die. They're supposed to pass out if they get hurt, but sometimes they die, sometimes of old age, sometimes of an accident. And this is where they go, this, this smoky tower, this misty tower where you can catch ghost Pokemon, okay? We're not going to spend our time... Actually, let, let's, let's just fight one. Do we have time for this? No, of course not. But let me see if we can find one. Yeah, that was a mistake. <laughs> We're out of here. We're going to go. Why did I bring us here? It wasn't to see ghosts. It was just to let you hear this song. And the reason this song is interesting is apparently this is this this town is called Lavender Town, okay? As you can see. And apparently there's an old ghost story about this game called the Lavender Tone. And it's said that back in 1996, 20 years ago when this game first came out for Japan, the red and green versions there was something about the tone of this music, the high-pitched uh, treble bass of this, that it affected young children in a way where they started killing themselves. And it's rumored that over 200 kids were either uh, sickened or got so uh, affected by this music that they started hanging themselves and started throwing themselves off of, of buildings. Did I know about this 24 hours ago? No, I knew about Lavender Town. I knew we'd probably stop by here because it's haunted, but it wasn't until I was sitting in that pavilion with, with Reed while Felicia was chasing down that Machop that he told me this ghost story. Apparently this is a big thing. Most Pokemaniacs know about it, but it just gives you an ideal level of culture that has arisen from this franchise over the years. I'm relatively sure it's just a ghost story. I don't think there's any scientific or pr even, you know, historical proof on this this story, but I find it fascinating uh, that, that things like that are occurring with this game. Now, what I want to do, I'm going to show all you Pokemaniacs out there my team, but we're going to put them away because we have plans today. So what do I got? I've got this Farfetch. He's going to stick with us. This guy's going to get us around the country because he can fly. We're also going to bring the Claw with us. He's my favorite. Uh, he's just a big crab with a big claw. Uh, my ghost here, Carrie. Shout out to Stephen King. We're going to put her away. Oh. There we go. Uh, Centipede. Homage to the Atari game Centipede. You know, I named him before he evolved. So he was a centipede at the time. Little did I know. Portly. Gotta love him. He's kind of my fighter. Packs a big punch. And then finally, Odo. You know, this guy can polymorph. So I named him after the shapeshifter in Deep Space Nine. Nerd alert. Okay. All right. So that's it. We're going to get out of here. And we're going to have uh, our far-fetched, our little duck, fly us across the country of Kanto from Lavender Town all the way down oops 
All the way down to the safari zone. Why are we going to the safari zone? Well, I'm about to show you what Pokemon's all about. All over this country, there are different ways to catch Pokemon. And down here in Fuchsia City is a little attraction. Uh, no. There's a little attraction called the Safari Zone. This place even has a zoo. You can take a look at all these little Pokemon here. Learn a little about them. They're just hanging out in the pens. And this is what we're looking for. I This guy has eluded me all the times that I've played. And let me give you a look at him. It's called the Chansey. Okay? This is what we're hunting today. And that's what, it, what it's all about. We're putting it on the line today. Catching one is all up to chance. Are we going to be lucky? Frankly, if I'm going to be realistic, I'm going to say no. <laughs> but we want to stay positive. We want to cross our fingers, so we're going to enter the safari zone. Okay? And we'll get a little information as to how this is played. You gotta pay 50 bucks, 500 bucks to get in there. And you go out into the safari area. And whatever you catch, you get. Alright, so they give us 30 balls. And I believe we, we, we stay out here for an, a limited amount of time, which is about 500 steps. And whatever we pick, we're going to grab them. Oh, this guy's creepy. All right, let's pick him up. So he looks like he's... I think if I just throw a ball at him, we're going to have a good shot at catching him. Fingers crossed. No. All right, what if we feed him? We're going to throw a little bait his way. Maybe that'll distract him. Oh, man, he ran off. See how hard this could be? This might be hard. Alright, what's this? Another one. Alright, let's see if we can catch him this time. Throw a little bait out. I mean, it's a fly! You telling me a fly is not gonna want to eat this stuff? Alright, ball. Steady? Oh, come on. Just, just eat. Come on, fingers crossed. Oh, oh. Oh, come on! Ugh. Oh my god. What a jerk. I'm frustrated. I'm gonna throw a rock at him. <laughs> yeah, you mad? Good. Is that gonna distract you enough to stay with me? Stay. 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 Oh my god. Ugh. I'm used to, I'm like burning through balls here. How much time we got? 20... Hey, we got him! Alright, cool. So let's give him a name. We'll call him Blackbeard. I know I should probably lowercase this, but... I don't think you'd want to wait for me to do that. And of course, Blackbeard is a girl. Oops. <laughs> of course. Alright. Alright, let's get out of this patch and we'll move on. There's these little cabins here where you can hang out, meet other people who are on the safari. Come on, fingers crossed. Chansey! 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 No. Oh, this guy looks pretty ferocious. All right, let's 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 get him angry. I think if we distract this guy, we might have a shot at catching him. Oh, I didn't mean to throw him two rocks. Whoops. Now he's really mad. Yeah, all right. Sorry, that was my mistake. Let's try this patch one more time. Chancy, 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 Chancy. Oh, oh, it's like a female version of the thing. All right, we'll we'll feed her. You gotta take a chick out to dinner before she uh, goes with you, right? Oh, I guess not. <laughs> Shows how much I know about women, huh? All right, we'll let those lovebirds hang out. There's lots of different areas here in the safari zone. Right now, it looks like we're in the center area. What a colorful name. Uh, let's see, we had 10 minutes, 
20 minutes. Do it. Okay, this two-headed thing. We're going to run out these safari balls. And then we're going to hit the chest. Did we get them? Nice. Yes. We'll call him uh, Calico Jack. Uh, and again, another another chick. <laughs> I've noticed that I have a knack of catching girls in this game. And I have a knack for always naming them guy things. Oh well. And as you can see, if I go into my inventory now, now these guys are part of my team. You got Blackbird, Calico Jack, and the two others. We've got room for a couple other Pokemon to add to our little team here. Do we need to keep them? No. Do we need to spend any time with them at all? No. Can we devote everything to them? Yes. And that's the beauty of Pokemon. It's basically a 16-bit RPG with an unlimited amount of fr characters to spend time with. I don't want another of these guys, so we'll just run. Come on. Chansey, Chansey. Ooh, this guy's cool. All right, you're coming with me. Here, here's some food for your kid. Oh, I ran? Oh, God. I need to start just tossing balls. I got way too many balls on me. I feel, I have a feeling I'm gonna say balls a lot this hour. Don't read into that. All right, here we go. How about these guys, huh? Stay. 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 Oh. He's watching carefully. Come on. Come on. Come on. Stay. Yes! Alright. What are we going to call them? How about uh, the crew? Because there's a lot of them. Okay. Chancy, 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 Chancy. That's not Chancy. Oh man, we're so behind. We're like 22 plus 55. 35 minutes in, seriously? Paris. This guy is like. Uh, a bug with mold on his back. I heard a friend of mine playing Pokemon Go this week found one of these in uh, the employee bathroom. <laughs> Do we need to get OSHA on the line? Uh, we'll call him Rum. Rummy. There we go. So now we got a full party. I believe. Yeah, uh, you know, these are, you can save them in the bank like we did earlier. Or you can let them go if they're a double. We'll try and catch this one. Just gonna try and run these balls out, man. I don't know if we can do that, though. We may have to go. We may have to go. How many balls do we have left? Oh, that's my bike. I don't need that. What do we got here? Oh my god! There he is! Alright, this is very dangerous stuff here. I have no idea what to do. Do I throw bait? Do I try and catch him outright? Do I throw a rock? I'm not going to throw a rock. Would you throw a rock into something like that? Alright, I'm going to bait him. No, I'm, I'm gonna throw. I'm gonna throw. I'm gonna throw. Cross your fingers. Come on, stay in there. Stay in there. Stay. 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 Everything's okay. Everything's okay. Come on. Come on. Oh my god, no. 
No, don't do it. No! That safari music is terrible. That's a, it's a far cry from uh, far cry from the Lavender Town music. Are we gonna find another one? I don't know, but we got about 17 more balls left. We'll, we'll run out the safari zone, then I'll take you to one other part of the city, one other part, one of the other cities, my favorite part of the country where I spend the most of my personal time in Pokemon and as you can see this is very open-ended uh, I'm at to the point where I have a, a Pokemon who can fly me to anywhere in the country and if there's there's different activities and locations in each city and different Pokemon to find in each city and that's really what it's all about is finding new friends to add to your collection okay let's get into this we are at nearly 40 minutes okay let's get started okay so this is a pretty decent deal uh, you gotta love when you walk into a place and uh, you don't see anything on the floor but you go up to the counter and they say hey there are those games that we have that are sitting in the break room why don't you bring those out and they end up being GameCube games oh yes GameCube games are always a good find in the right place and uh, I think we did okay. So let's take a look. They had all of these following games marked for a buck each. Okay? Let's get started. You got Sonic Mega Collection. She is complete. And it's dirty, but not scratched. Mega Collection, you know, we see this one pretty often. But there's nothing wrong with that because it's got a whole host of excellent Sonic games there to play. And also, a little known fact, there's some uh, unlockable Sega games that have nothing to do with Sonic, like Flicky and Comic Zone on this little guy. Not bad for a buck. Not bad at all. Lord of the Rings. Two Towers. Great games. I don't know... Um, I, Return of the King is a better game in my opinion. This guy looks pretty scratched. I can't say if she's going to run alright. But here's the thing. We've got a stack here of GameCube games for a dollar each. That's a really good deal and it's very hard for me to pass that up. So usually if I see that I'm just going to take the stack and roll the dice. Okay? Sonic. Adventure DX. Director's Cut, otherwise known as Sonic Adventure for the Dreamcast. It was eventually ported over to the GameCube. This is really wrecked. Terribly wrecked looking disc. No ma manual. The, uh, the box art's really screwed up. Looks like it's waterlogged. I don't know where this was kept. Uh, this has some additional com content from... Uh, um, the Dreamcast version, hence the director's cut. And I think this might have some Game Boy Advance connectivity. I always like that. That's always fun. Another Lord of the Rings game, Lord of the Rings of Third Age, turn-based strategy or uh, role-playing game. Uh, we have this for PlayStation 2. Uh, I'm pretty happy to have this for, for GameCube. I always think GameCube just, I don't know, playing a GameCube game just always seems to me to have, be a little more classy and quality than a PS2 game. And um, these format being what they are, there's a lot of cutscenes here, so this needed to be a two-disker. And it's a nice shape. Nice shape. Discs. At least disc one is good. I'm not going to waste your time with disc two. It looks very nice. Looks definitely playable. Medal of Honor Rising Sun. I remember when we went out to Normandy a few months back. We did uh, Medal of Honor Frontline. 
Somebody said, have you played Rising Sun? And I'm like, I see it everywhere, but I just assumed it was a bad, you know, not that great. I was like, no, no. It was just the market was saturated. It's an excellent game. I think this might be Pearl Harbor. Pearl Harbor. That's interesting. It would certainly be educational for me. And while the the plastic here is wrecked, this could all definitely be replaced and be a very nice copy. So that's pretty sweet. Rain of Fire. Here this is bad, but I don't know. You're in a Jeep, and you've got some anti-air guns on the back of your Jeep, and you're blowing away dragons. I mean, it sounds okay to me. I always kind of wanted this for the GameCube. Looks like it's in pretty bad shape, though. I don't know. No guarantees this guy's going to run. Shadow the Hedgehog. Somebody liked their Hedgehog games in this lot. Shadow's a little harder to get hold of these days. You know, Sonic likes to run by his opponent. Shadow likes to blow him away. Ugh. Not the prettiest disc. Oh, okay. Sonic Heroes, jeez. Mola Sonic. Where's all the Mario, right? Terrible looking disc. Terrible. I can't believe these were accepted. You know, people people turn these in for money, and it's like these, these pawn dealers will just take it. They don't, they, you know. But then again, they're not giving them a lot of money. I mean, they're selling these for a dollar each, so. Uh, Donkey Kong Jungle Beat. You got to use the stupid uh, Congos for this. Like, you got you to gotta beat on a drum to get them to move. It's a 2D platformer, except you're using a drum. This looks like it'll run. This looks like it'll be alright. This is complete. Never, I hear it's good, but I don't, I don't know. We don't even have the bongos. I just feel like that would take up space. Uh, Mario Party 7. Mario Party 7. Always good to grab one of these. We've got all these, but man, this is, this is what turns, you know, a lot that you're buying into gravy. This is going to pay for everything and then some. Uh, it's probably going to need to get fixed. So fingers crossed that that's going to work. But God bless GameStop. That's what I'll say about this guy. God bless GameStop these days because if this doesn't, if I get this fixed and it doesn't run and I can't sell this to like, you know, a customer directly, I can give it to GameStop and they'll take it without even looking at it if you get the right doofus in there. I've done it. It works. Is that shady? Maybe, but trust me. GameStop's doing their own. I mean, they'll take anything, and that includes five hundred dollar reprodu you know, reproductions of games, and sell them online. You know, they'll just sell fakes. It's been, I mean, it's happened in the past year. Or so, and then finally, hard to find. Super Mario Strikers. This one we have, but we only have the disc. So to find, um, to find it in the case alone was worth this lot. Very happy about that. And thank God because the disc is in terrible condition. So so I don't know. We'll probably try and fix up Strikers and 7 and uh, get this lot uh, get this lot for free-ish. Um, I looked at these. I was looking at this in front of You know, he's like, what's the problem? I'm like, the discs are pretty wrecked. Uh, he, you know, I'm like, eh, you know, they're pretty wrecked, but I, I'll, oh, you know, I'll go for it. It was still a great deal, a dollar, even the ones that are broken. I'm going to go for this. What are we looking at? 11 bucks, somewhere around there. $11. Uh, he said, he looks at his manager, whispers in her ear, comes back to me. He's like, how about 50 cents each? So 50 cents each, that's not bad. We got these for whopping $5.50. Huzzah. Okay? Uh, whether they work or not, uh, I, I mean, geez. And most of these we have. I'm happy about the Rising Sun. I'm happy, especially happy about Rain of Fire. I really don't want to get Rain of Fire fixed. And the, the Strikers case is really sweet. So, All right. We're, uh, let's, let's wrap it up there for the booty segment. We got 20 minutes left. We'll play a little more Pokemon. 
We'll uh, run out our balls in the Safari Zone. If you have a question or comment, please feel free to leave it in uh, the Twitch chat. We'll address it live. If not, we got some questions sitting over here in the bag that tells no tales. Okay, uh, let's get back to it. We're in the Safari Zone in Pokemon Leaf Green for the Game Boy Advance. Alright, back to this really annoying music. Alright, I'm back. Headphones, please. Great. Dun, 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 dun. Oh! Is it Chansey? Ugh. No, you're not a Chansey. And now I'm gonna start saving my balls. Because I got 10 minutes to kill? Not even, dude. Jeez. Not even 10 minutes to kill. Uh, run. That, that, you know, Pokemon Go story, that really ran us over, but I think it's important to discuss it. You know, you're looking at what we're playing now. This is what people are doing all over the country right now. They're just walking around with their backpacks on, looking at their phone, playing this game in real life. Then they're running into. Ooh, let's get try and catch this guy. These guys are cool. Catch. Ugh. Let's feed him some bait. No, we're gonna get him mad. Let's throw a rock at him. He can take it, right? Oh man. Dang it. I need a chancy. Let me guess. I already blew it, so there's no way we're gonna find him again? Is that what you're telling me? Oh, I don't want to see these stupid eggs. Wow, is this monotony at its finest? I can't even get a- oh wait, no, I can't get across there. Oh no, I, I'm supposed to have- oh no, I can! Maybe. Let's get- let's try and catch this guy. Really like these Rhine horns. Hey, there you go. Nice. Yeah, let's call him uh, Cap and Kid. Oh. Oh, look at my mastery of uh, typing here. All right, there we go. Oh my god. I want a Chansey! Come on, give me a Chansey. Now I'm just running around. How much you want to bet that's scaring him off? Come on, baby. Come on, baby. We've got 11 minutes left in the voyage. I don't have time for this. And we've got a question to field. I should probably be fielding it while I might do that. Who needs to see my ugly mug? Oh, okay. So, can I... I can. All right. So, yeah. The claw is going to get us over to the other side of there. I don't know what's in there, but that's not going to be a chancy. For God's sakes, have a little mercy. Oh my God. I, I'm i seriously going to ask, I'm, I'm going to do the mailbag segment while we're hunting. And I'm not even going to get to show you my favorite part of this game. Ugh. All right, come on. Come on. Come on, Chansey. Give me a break. Ugh. At least one more shot. Please. 
Do you remember doing this when you used to play this game? Trying to find the Chansey? Yeah. This is the only place in the world he's found, I believe. It's in the Safari Zone. You can't tear, you can't wear him down. What? Oh, no. oh, that's it? All right. All right. Well, we failed. We walked away with some Pokemon. I'm going to bring you to my favorite part of town. It'll cheer me up. My other country. Cheer me up. Celadon City. And if you know Pokemon, you already may be smiling at what I propose here. Celadon City is the shopping district. There's a big department store here. It's like seven seven floors high. But we, we're not going there. We're going to this little unassuming yellow building here. Because this, my friends, is the Pokemon Casino. And if you know anything about me, it's that I love gambling in a role-playing game. So I got a lot of credits. Ugh. Oh, uh, I got some cherries. Okay. You can, uh, you can put these credits to get enough. You can earn, uh... You can trade them in for Pokemon. Alright, let's see. Ugh, way off. I'm trying to get those sevens. Have some sort of victory in Kanto today. Oh my god. way off <laughs> it's it's doable and it's actually kind of skill based it's not total total g gambling you are able to stop it get another five minutes here what is it eight eight minutes left in the show something like that this is uh, I want to hit a seven Come on. Oh man. At least get me something viable. I don't think I've ever gotten the Team Rocket. Ugh. More cherries. I'm I'm making just enough to break even. Jeez, I suck. Look at that, I got two of the Flevens. Ah! <laughs> oh, Jesus. Wow, I suck. Alright, we're done. We're done. This is really addictive. I seriously, I, I turned this stupid game on, and this is usually all I ever do. It's come to this, this casino, sit next to this old guy who's smoking cigarettes. I mean, it, it, you got a whole world of, of wonder and exploration out there. Raz and you're you're becoming a what do they call him arm jockey yeah there's no way all right we're done we're done I'm sorry one two ah yeah we're done all right that's it we're coming back. Thanks, Pokey. I hope you learned a little something about uh, Pokemon there. Look, there's a lot to see. There's a lot to explain. There's a reason this series has been around for uh, 20 years or so. Uh, but I love it. I think it's a great game. It's not something that I play religiously. Like I said, I think I took like a decade-long break, but... Um, it's 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 cool
It's like a Super Nintendo game. Yeah, it's 16-bit graphics. Open world, you can save at any moment. Perfect for on the go. Give it a shot, and especially, you know, give Pokemon Go a shot. It's free, for God's sake. If anything, you get out there and walk around a little bit. It's good for you. Okay, let's check the mailbag here. And that time for a question. This comes from Fay Wolf, and she writes, Dear Cap and Raz, my question, uh, or uh, what is your first, my question for the mailbag is, what is your first impression of Pokemon, what was your first impression of Pokemon when it released in 1996? I was in college at the time. I was in college, and I had a Game Boy Color at the time, and I had, uh, I decided to go with Pokemon Blue at the time. Uh, was I excited? Yeah. Yeah, I think I was. Uh, mainly because it just looked like a cool RPG and it was on the go. It scored high. Um, I was, I mean, I, I, I played my share of these kind of games on the SNES. So to have a decent one on the go that saves anywhere and you can fight with your friends, sounded cool. Had a couple other friends in college who played not many, but the three of us all got them. Uh, for some reason, it grabbed these guys. These were not gamers. They weren't guys who usually uh, buy video games. But there was something about Pokemon, Bob and Mark, something about them. They got caught up in it, just like me. And it was enough where we were all able to get 152. I believe this had somewhere around there. 151, 150, 152 Pokemon. Uh, you can only get them all by trading in the first version. I think that's traditional. I don't know about if that's in every version, but certainly in, the, in blue and red, you had to trade. So I remember us being in college and, you know, being at these parties. They didn't do this all the time, but we would be at parties and we would be playing. And, uh, you know, hitting the keg and then, <laughs> you know, uh, having to attach wires to each other's... Game Boy, because I think maybe at the time, I mean, probably Game Boy Colors. Yeah, we had Game Boy Colors. Uh, loved it. I think she's got another question here. Did I ever imagine the hype would reach the level it has and survive the length of popularity it has endured? Well, they played it pretty smart. Um, I think the, the cartoon is really where they played it smart. Uh, I never watched the cartoon. In my opinion, the game was enough. Uh, I'm trying to think if there's a, there was enough of a precedent before 96 with Nintendo games to warrant me to think that it would endure. In Mario, you know, you look at Mario and obviously in, eight, in 90 you knew... It was just going to continue on. So it wasn't like this was the first franchise Nintendo was able to just s s sustain. Uh, I think that this... I, yeah, I mean, honestly, I, I think this game holds up better than Mario does. Personally. It's got more going for it. It's competitive if you want it to be. I don't know. It's cooperative. Sure, you can trade Pokemon. Uh, it's open-ended and it's handheld. So yeah, I could see it. Um... I was really into it. I do know that I burned out, though. Me, personally. After Pokemon Gold. I played through Pokemon Gold, and it, then from then on, it just... I lost it. There were too many Pokemon. They kept re-releasing them. It seemed like it was kind of the same game over and over. Um, but, you know, the kids were watching that cartoon, and I think that that's what put them through. No, I, you know, I have to say, yeah, uh, I probably underestimated it. I probably underestimated, like Sonic. I never thought Sonic would be as popular as Sonic is coming into these later years. Uh, but I think Pokemon's certainly more deserving of it than Sonic. All right, that's it. We're a little bit over already. It was nice uh, talking with you, Pokemon. Um, pick it up. Have fun with your friends. We will see you next time. Thank you for joining me in Kanto. We'll have another adventure ready to go, unless, of course... The world takes over, and we're swept into some sort of maelstrom of adventure we had no idea we, we, we did not see coming. 
Whether or not that's the case, we're going to storm it. We're going to handle it together. And until then, I want to know do to ye Spanish ladies. I want to know do ye ladies of Spain. For we received orders for to sail off to Canto. And we may never see ye fair ladies again. Cut it, cut it, we're over time, cut it. Keep your powder dry, et cetera, et cetera.